you can come out now. Stop raining. Hello everybody, I hope you're well. In this week's episode, we're gonna be constructing a parapet warm deck roof. Now they're easy things to build in theory, but they're difficult things to get right, especially from a thermal efficiency point of view. Now one of the key ingredients of said thermal efficiency is the contents of this box, as you probably already noticed. It's not there, it's on my kitchen table. Now the contents of this box and the reason why it's here will all be explained towards the end of the video. But needless to say, it's because it's here and not there, that this episode is part one and not the complete thing. I had a bit of a boo-boo, but we'll go into all that a little bit later on. Now, unbelievably, to start the roof, I've got to do a little bit more building downstairs. Well, that was Monday. Got those two nibs in, formed the internal doorway through there, which is why we've used concrete lintels, because this roof is all coming off. We're pinching a little bit off the garage to form a bigger utility, and then a whole new roof is coming over, sloping down this way to our guttering down here. So we have, uh, yeah, well, so we, we finished that off now. So the wall plate is on, as you can see, and Richard is cracking on with the roof, as you can see. Right then, now, you're gonna to have to bear with us during this episode simply because it's gonna be a lot easier to show you what we're doing once we've done it, I should say, rather than explain it because we're blowing our own minds really trying to, trying to think of a way of explaining this. But stage by stage then of a warm roof, what we've done is, Rich obviously built it, there's uh, furnace ships to go on top of here, you'll see those later. So what I'm going, uh, uh, going around doing now is getting this old insulation that we've got off cuts that we've used off of for jobs. It's either this or landfill. So it's, got to, it's better to be used somewhere, isn't it? And I am foaming them in, get as tight as I possible can, but foaming them in between the rafters on top of the internal skin of block work. Reasons for that? Again, we'll show you later. It's all going to become apparent. I'm trying to talk you through it now. It's just, we've gone cross-eyed a few times. Yeah, it's, it's pointless. You might as just show it because it yeah. gets confusing, yeah. So, just to show you what I'm doing then. I've done that up to now, uh, leaving them slightly higher and cutting them back down to that. I've now got to do the same over there. Whenever we do foam, expanding foam, not glue, expanding foam, we always use the, um, the fire stuff simply because and there's no science at all that I can back this up with. I reckon it goes it goes off harder when it's done. I'm, I'm going to use when the word it, dense. Dense. It's not more it, dense. It's dense. That's a word I can relate to. So I've I, I got nothing to back that up at all, but it just seems it. Plus, if you're using fire foam, you can't go wrong, can you? You can use normal foam where you should be using fire foam, but you can't use fire foam where you shouldn't be using. Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, we move on. So I'm doing that. Going all the way across, I'll get all the same across there, and then we can start building our external block work and get the actual building of it, masonry wise, finished. So we'll crack on, we'll check back in in a bit, and then we'll explain further in uh, hopefully more cleaner, cleaner, clearer details. Clearer as in clear skies as well. It's, not, it's, it's rained and hailed and sun comes out and gets too hot. It's ridiculous oh, no. today. It's, yeah, it's strange, which is why we're doing things slightly out of really order than we normally would simply because we, we, we've got to play the weather and I don't want to put a mix of compo on if it's gonna rain again which it looks like it's about to if that comes over anyway we'll crack on we'll get what we've done can get done what get can get done what we Jeez, if you do, oh, I'll tell you what forget it right started a bit late last night let's get these corners up so uh, very nearly already I've just got to get Three course corner up there, and on the far side, Mick is just putting the wall starters on, so I can crack on with that. Just to show you then, what we're gonna be, how we're gonna be building this in relation to tying it into the, the stud wall that's gonna be at the back of it. Now obviously, um, timber frame areas have been around for God knows how long, and fixing masonry into timber, it's, it's all there, isn't it? you know what I mean? It's all, we've got these, 
these proper ties there, which I'll show you one getting uh, fixed in. I'll put that on screen now. So I'm gonna put them where I can, and where I can is in the end grain of every single rafter going across both sides. Then above that, as you can see, I am then above the rafter, so I can't use those ties. So what we decide to do is put a wall tie out and then I'm gonna, we're gonna penny wash out and screw that straight in again on every single rafter, all the way across on both sides. Moving on then above that, it's got one more course to go. And what we've done, we've twisted the end of this wall tie 90 degrees. So then that will get screwed in, again with a penny washer, to the sides of the upright, so this ladder frame that's coming here, and that ties that in. Now, you could finish this roof structurally, build this wall up, and then tie it in as you would, as I say, a timber frame house. But we can't waste this weather, you see, so we're doing things slightly out of order. If we were to wait for this roof to be done, it could be raining for the rest of the week. So whilst it's nice, let's get this done. Yes, it's slightly backwards. And yes, we are um, we are thinking outside the box in terms of tying it in, but I've got a bit paranoid about it. You don't put this many ties in, into this many course. Oh, I've got a bit paranoid about it, so I'm going to. Simple as that. It's not gonna be detrimental at all. And I know that this wall tie on top of the rafter there is higher. So yes, when I get screwed down, that wall tie will be leaning back into the house. And I know that that's a no-no. However, the roof's coming over to here. All this is being clad in plastic. There is no water that's going to be able to get into that, through that wall, into that cavity, to warrant that being an issue. So I don't mind. I don't mind that at all. In this particular instance, what we're trying to achieve. Just to talk quickly about these things. This, uh, this foam here, look at that, that is unbelievable, isn't it? it it's, it's so good. What make was that? Because I bought a different one today because we've run out, so I bought three more of this soda, soda all, for expanding foam. But that one there was this stuff, Alpha Chem by Chromar, which do some great stuff in terms of roofing and adhesives and things. But there was one here that was a bit short, but it was either use it or it goes in the skip. So that's not a friction fit at all, whereas that one is, but that, fantastic. Really, really good. So the first thing I'm gonna do then is continue across there, as I say, both sides, get that sorted. Then I can start building and away we go. Enough talking, let's get some music on. I hope you enjoy it. Well, that's a shame, just check the footage. And my camera turned off, zaps the battery on time lapse. And when it puts your uh, low battery warning on, it cuts the camera off, but there we go. So that's rely on the customer security cameras, but there we have it. So as you can see then, from a blocks and mortar point of view, we're up to height and we are very nearly done. This is gonna be the outlet here, so I've left them off. But, uh, this is where it starts to get interesting, depending on your point of view, of course. We're gonna start now putting, constructing the warm deck roof. Now, everything you can see here, woodwork-wise, is just a standard uh, flat roof construction. Isn't that right, Richard? Warm or cold roof, this is, this is what you do either way. Exactly, there's nothing, as I said, there's nothing that's gone into this, structure-wise, that uh, d denotes um, a warm roof. It's everything that we do from this point onwards. In fact, the only thing that we have done that you wouldn't normally do is um, 
uh, the insulation that we showed you earlier. Um, apart from that, you're up to date. It's all warm deck from this point onwards. To that end, we're gonna get these boards up and we're gonna form our first deck straight away across. We can't quite finish it just yet, simply because of the saw pipe, which we'll go into a little bit later. Well, we're not going into the saw pipe, but you know what I mean. So, first thing then, for the warm deck construction is board it out, which we're gonna do now. Get on with it. Oh, I'm excited. Just wanted to go through uh, in response to a comment that we've had from Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, for contacting the channel through the comments and watching. Thank you for that. She asked why we don't cut the furring strips into the diminishing buttons. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I will go into shortly. But as you can see, the buttons are on there now from 50 all the way down to zero, which is now this one. You can see they're getting thinner and thinner. And that one there is five mil. Um, and it going on this one, that one there, and then that one there is zero. So what I'll do now, I'll show you the reason why we don't cut the furrings out of these at the same time. With the price of timber the way it is at the moment, and can, seems to be going up, we want to make sure that we utilise as much of the offcuts as possible. So this is my explanation to you. My complete furring is 3840, from 50 mil to nothing, which will sit on top of the counter buttons. But I've got, I had some two meter pieces left over when we did the floor because we had to get long lengths bigger than what we needed because of stock. So we ended up with loads of two meter offcuts, a bit like this one. So what I've done is I've cut this to uh, 1920, which is directly in half of what I need, which is 3840. So because you're cutting it in half, I know that is zero. I know that is 50. So you cut it in half, at 1920 and I know then that that is 50 still and that now is 25 millimeters so that's exactly what I've done I've cut my fern strip 25 millimeters to 50 at 1920 that then means I've used up my two meter pieces so all I did um, all I've been doing sorry as per the the video that um, Adam put on the screen for you last week regarding the fern strips I'll just get this one so let me just come back a little bit this just goes onto there like that I then just screw it onto there, do my measurement, run it through the saw, take this off, run it through the saw again, and just repeat, repeat, repeat. That's all I've been doing, and I've got a pile of them there now. Then, if you remember, when we did the other flat roof, the one you're looking at now, because we'd used 9 by 2 to get the same depth of ceiling height in the, uh, the room beneath, we knew these were considerably over spec at C24 and 400 centers. So what I did with those was, if you remember watching the footage, I actually cut the furring strip out of that. So I'm already sloped, so there's no need for furring strips or diminishing buttons on there at all, because it's going one way, not two ways, like this one is up here. So again, utilizing timber. You can now see here, I've got these offcuts that I can also use to add on to 25 mil to nothing to finish that row of fern strips off. I hope that all makes sense to you, sir. That's why I've done it. And also, when you're cutting your diminishing buttons, it is a lot easier just to set up a width on the saw, rip them all through, if you've got a table saw, for me anyway. If you're freehanding, then maybe it's not as quick, but I've got a big table saw. Mm. And I can get them all set. So that's why we're doing it. No other reason than that, Sarah. Again, thank you very much for watching.
Right then, that's as much of the boarding that we can do for now, simply because, as I said earlier, we've got a timber to go on the wall and then we've got a box around this. But before we box around that, we have got to replace all that. That may be in a separate episode, so we'll come to that at a later date. We just put all these boards down and he's cut back for our upstand, which is now time to build. We've got to build that for the skylight, and then we've got to build our internal parapet walls and i'll hand you over to richard in a second to explain what we're doing there just to show you what i've just done you've just seen me insulate all that cavity and we're going to continue that insulation right the way up to the top of our parapet and we'll explain why i might go into a full explanation as to why we've done all this at the end of the video i've, I've penny washed and screwed those ties down all the way down so that course is now tied in and then when this upright goes up here that'll be penny wash tied into that we'll show you that in a second i'll hand you over to richard my glamorous assistant in order to, in order to explain how he's built this parapet wall over to you simple little bit of stud work then set my make sure i drop on all my centers of all my to correspond with my floor joists i've then put uh, an upright in then to correspond with the the ties that Adam's just mentioned to allow us to tie the next course of lock working. So it's a bit of a dual roll really. This will then sit directly on top of the floor joists rather than the, the deck because you'd have to then overcome the furrings and the diminished pattern. So there's, it's best to do it this way on your floor rather than top of your deck. That will then go uh, about 10 mil or so away from the edge of this board which corresponds with the inside of the wall plate if you can imagine that in your head. So allow us then to get the deck insulation over the internal wall. So if imagine that was the internal wall, the insulation is going to come like that. And we believe that that's, that's a good seal then. With our insulation we've already got in, fully insulated parapet. Again, that's going to go into the end of the video. We believe that's as good as it can physically be. So we'll put this in, screw it to the floor joists, uprights, then penny washer, the ties into the uprights. And it's that simple, really. It really is. It's Ooh, gonna... Sorry, one quick one. What we've also done for water drainage on top of the parapet, we've set this 10 mil lower than the external block work, so it's sloped away from the external, so the water hits the what is going to be the top of the parapet. Again, we'll go into future videos, are we going to make all that up, that design of everything else, but the water will run this way back onto this, this deck again. Beautiful. And what we'll also do is foam underneath this plate here and on top of there. So that goes on on a bed of foam as well, just to help with that thermal, uh, the thermal qualities of that fixing there, of that joint. And that'll sit just inside our, uh, our brackets there, so like just that, like that. pretty much, that's it. On foam, and then we've got to repeat that, if we've done over here. This wall has been built up in block work. I'll go into why a little bit later on, again at the end of the video. And that's that, so we'll put another time lapse now. We'll get this wall up. We'll get this wall up and then we'll have a look where we are. Because by that point, hopefully, according to the tracking on my phone, the vapor barrier would arrived and then we'll talk about that. Which is all very interesting stuff. Not very specific time though, is it really? The delivery of it. No, it's not. They need no. to be more specific. Exactly. Thank you officers for your work you do. Oop. That's the uh insulation police <laughs> for how much it costs now. <laughs> We've cracked on a bit. As you can see, we've got all this decked out now. We're just putting the finishing touches to it around the upstand for the flat roof, flat roof, flat glass lantern over there. Now then, word of warning, source your lantern or your, your glass before you do the upstand because no matter where you go, the specifications for the thickness of this upstand. They've always got the 150 mil out of the finished roof, but the thickness 
differs from manufacturer to manufacturer and it's caused a bit of a headache. So, a word to the wise, source your glass and build that to suit. Because what we've done in the past is have the actual lanterns and they're sort of made to measure. You can get them off the shelf, so to speak, but they're made to measure. And then you can do it 100 mil, four by two, do whatever. It comes out, it measures it, it makes it, it goes on. Flat glass. Have proven to be different, haven't they? I don't want to swear on the channel. But, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> well, right, there well, there you go. It's, um, yes, it's caused a headache, but there we have it. So it's that's... Progress, yeah. It's more for progress, that's the headache. Absolutely. We just need to know. We want to get up here, we want to, we want to crack on, we want to do some, and it, it, it tells with a bit, but it's, it's all sorted now. So that is uh, two by two timber, and it's going to be clad in 11 mil OSB, uh, GRP'd, and that, to the manufacturer specifications, is what it needs to be. And it's also 10 mil bigger in each dimension of the one that, that you want, in, in which case this is two meters by one meter. Anyway, we move on. Before we cover it up, I just wanted to show you this because this is a great visual example of what we're trying to achieve here. That ice cream van's going to be quick, isn't it? Really get any business, <laughs> um, we've got our thermal mass, if you like, with the thermalite wall. And then that then is continued up with the PIR in between the rafters and then continued up again into the parapet. And then we've insulated all the parapet right way to the very top and I'll just put a, a bit of footage on the screen now of tying the ties in or screwing the ties in into the side of the uprights so the external block work is now tied in I mean to the nth degree really into this timber frame at the back of it which is insulated right to the very top and then sealed off firmly not not uh, watertight or anything but sealed off with PIR along the top and then foamed in. Now for the reason for that is where any warm air, warm air? Warm air meets cold air, we want that to be out of the roof. We want it to be as high up as possible, not down it. We're worried that if we don't insulate this parapet, then that bit there is gonna be cold air, or top of the roof will be cold air, and then it will meet the warm air from the room, and then it will start to condensate and cause issues and sweat and all that sort of stuff further on down like it might take years to come through but it will do eventually that's what we're worried about so we've insulated all that now you let us know whether we've gone above and beyond here and insulated that for absolutely no good reason by all means put it in the comments and we'll learn a bit from it but belt on braces it can't do any harm in doing that because where the cold air meets the warm air now it can only be up here which is x amount of millimeters outside of the fabric of the building which is good we think and that's what we've done. That wall there, I'll explain a little bit later. I'll move out Richard's way so we can crack on. But yes, that's that's why we've done done it the way that we've done it. If we'd come up here in masonry, so to speak, and then not put that wall plate in and then continue this up in block work, then the inside wall becomes an outside wall. And then that dew point or where that cold air meets the warm air will be at this level here, which again will cause the issues that we're trying to negate by doing what we've done here. So we think that this is a much firmly efficient, better way of doing things. Absolutely. Whether or not we've, you know, over-egged the pudding, we don't know, but we certainly haven't under-egged it, which is what we want. No, 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 we haven't done anything detrimental. Now, where this is slightly different, as you can, as you remember, the, the rafters go this way, so PIR can come up this way. Over here, there's a rafter to come here, and then the lintel, so there's nothing here to, to do. Now, what we could have timbered the cross, laddered out, if you like, and, and done it uh, exactly the same, but we thought that we can come straight off the lintel in the block work and come up to this height, um, because the lintel downstairs is a steel, not a lintel, so there's no thermal break in that steel. We have to put it in later by insulating the back of it. By insulating the back of it, then we've got to insulate the entire wall to bring it out, albeit it's only a couple of, it's only a couple of hundred mil either side uh, for the reveals. That then will stand that wall off firmly past this point here. So the thermal, it'll be firm, it'll be, what am I trying to say? It'll be firmly efficient all the way up. 
because don't forget we've got 150 mil of insulation to go to that, that point there. The thermal uh, plasterboard will come to about here. We've got the vapour barrier to go in between. So we think that that's good. And hopefully, hopefully it will be, as I say, we've still got to, I've got to cut that insulation back a bit. We've got to um, seal this off the exact same way as we've done there, but I've run out of offcuts. So what we'll have to do is use the offcuts with 150 mil. Once we've got them, once we've done this, because they will be offcuts, because we've got to cut around that thing. So that is where we're at. That's why we've done it. Now in terms of waterproofing, that's just roofing a roof. So we'll, we'll go into that a little bit later on of what we're going to do. But as you can imagine, the parapet wall needs to be capped off with a sufficient drip down the side. Now where this has caused a bit of an issue is that you, you can use, just, they have done for God knows how many years, um, coping stones that go on the top. Now I don't know whether you can get coping stones big enough now to suit 150 mil cavity they are they are big huge things but there'll always be a weak point with coping stones that weak point being the the joint imagine if these are coping stones here the weak point will always be the mortar joint there but maybe you can use sealant to put them on do whatever but water will will get through it eventually and we're trying to make this as future proof as possible now what we've done in the past where we've had a sarni fill roof um, a roof covering i should say what they asked us to do there was just osb straight the way across the top and then he puts his cappings on the side and then it all gets sarni filled over you'll see more of that in this video uh, that we did a couple of years ago if you want to if you want to explore that um, but we're GRP in this, we're going to fiberglass it. So we're going to cap it off exactly the same way as he asked us to do it, to do that, that style of roof. Um, and we're going to OSB it and we're going to overshoot it by a considerable amount. Uh, and then we're going to fiberglass it all in one, all the way down and away it goes. It's, and that is, it's going to look a little bit pony to be honest with you. Um, initially but when it's all done it's going to be absolutely it's, it's, going, it's going to be perfect and there's going to be no weak spots there's going to be a flawless um, um, no joined fiberglass strip all the way around there's no way for the water to get into now for the time being it's going to be over overhung i should say considerably and just roughly we're not going to try and do it if this was brickwork uh, finished brickwork we can put our osb on uh, set it out to the trim of the GRP, the pre-made drip trim that comes with it, and set it all to the brickwork, and then do it all you want, and then and then that will be then it'll be finished. We're having cladding here, so that's going to need battening, and there's a bit of a dispute at the minute because there's conflicting information within the spec of whether it needs counter battening or single battening. That obviously gives us a difference in thickness. Also, there's clips for this that fix onto the battens that you fix the cladding onto. Again, so this thickness of where this drip trim needs to be, and we want it to be perfect to the cladding, is up for debate. So we're going to leave our OSB long. We're going to GRP it, finished, not finished, but we're going to GRP it so it's waterproof. And then once the cladding is fitted, once we've got a bit of clarification with it, once it's fitted straight up to the, uh, to the bottom of the OSB, we can cut that off then to suit the drip trim and then fiberglass, refiberglass the top of it. So it's all in one. It's not the most aesthetically best to do from the, if you're looking at it from this window here, because with GRP you can't iron out any, uh, you can't fiberglass over any kind of discrepancies. If you were to fiberglass this, that bump there, you will see that bump, it'll all be there. There's no papering over the cracks, so to speak. So where that trim goes on top of our, uh, GRP there will be that little bit of like a one one or two well it's probably about one mil kind of lip so it won't be flawless if you're looking at it from this point uh, but that's a kind of compromise that unfortunately we're going to have to take because of uh, the cladding because we're unsure about what kind of having and the way it's all fixed on all will be great in the end but you get to these jobs, 
these stages of a job and you want to do this bit and you want to finish it and then you want to move on. But unfortunately, we can't. So we're gonna to have to come back to it. But for the time being, we're gonna get all that finished and then we're gonna vapor bury it. We'll talk about that and then we'll crack on with it. Right then, last bit of talking and then we'll get you one time lapse, get a bit of music playing. Um, just to show you then, that is stage one of a warm deck, very nearly complete. Richie's just doing the finishing touches over there and we've still got the parapets to go on, which to be fair, isn't to do with a warm deck as such, that's just a finishing feature. Warm deck is getting the OSB down initially over your flat roof construction. Second stage is installing, very, very important this is, the vapour barrier. Now, I just wanted to show it you, because it's a bit different than what I've bought before, unbeknownst to me, it's turned up and I've had a bit of a, had a, bit of a wobble with it, but we're gonna use it because it's specified and it's gonna do what it's gotta do. The only difference is that this is foil side down, self-adhesive, and it's the foil side that's sticky. So it goes down, all the other stuff that I've ever used, Atrilux and all the other brands that are like it, a foil side up, stick it back, exactly the same, but it's a foil side up. So you see some videos and I say, oh, you've done it wrong, you've put it upside down and whatnot. Well, this is what it is. Well, you know, I don't know what else that we can do. It is Sika VVAP, v no, SVAP, I should say. We broke into VVAP Las Vegas then. SVAP 4000. Um, and this roll here is 84 square meters for 365 quid, I think it was, which is by far the most cost-effective one that I could find. Atrilux, that is 20 square meters. The best bicycle I could find that is 100, 105 pound plus VAT. Um, the issue with this flat roof, especially the warm side of it, the warm deck construction, is that you need vapor barriers, you need the thermally broken fixings that, that, we've, uh, that we've got to put on top. I'll show you those later. Maybe not in this video, because I haven't arrived yet. You can't go out and buy them. So it's all online, Amazon don't sell it. And then if you move away from Amazon, then the delivery time is three or four days down the road. So you're a bit stuck really. But the uh, company, that I'll put the name on the on screen now, the, e, the eBay shop I got this from, um, they sent it out as quick as they could. It's got here within two days. I messaged the fella to get the firmly broken fixings. Yeah, they'll be here for Friday. Today is Friday, they haven't turned up. So we're not gonna be able to fix this down anyway. I'll still have to show you that in the next episode, which is a little bit annoying. What I might do is once it's all together, once it's all finished, is re-edit this and put it as a, a one complete video of a warm deck construction. As it is, this is like a, a week by week vlog, if you like. Um, so yeah, there we go then. So don't shout at me when you see that this is foil side down. What can I do? This is it. This is specified. This is what Seeker have made. This is what I've bought. That's how it goes down. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put 150 mil strips. Um, sorry, I'm going to do 300 mil strips because it's going to be easier. So 150 mil upstand and then 150 mil down, and then go straight um, from side to side with it. Simply because because it's self adhesive. Trying to get it up and then down in one as you're peeling it all off, it can get a little bit bumpy. I want it as flat as possible. So that's what we're going to do. And I topped it for you. I've come off here, 300 mil. And all I'm going to do, and drawn a line, a line wider than this. Oh yeah, that's heavy. And every time then, I can put it to there, I can roll it out, I've got my line there, I've got my line there already, put your level down, cut it, 300 mil strip. I can then mass produce them, so to speak. So go all the way around. And there we have it, right then, let's get some music on and we'll crack on.
Right then, we're going to have to leave this episode here, I'm afraid, because I've made a bit of a boo-boo. It's Friday afternoon. The clips have arrived as good as gold. The little thermal brake insulations, uh, insulation clips. Uh, yeah, I've sent them home and I, I could have... I could have sworn I had them sent here. Well, not here actually, a click and collect of a petrol station around the corner. But I've had the notification, they're at home. So there we go. So that means then I ain't got time to go back, get them, get back here, insulate it, board it, and then cover it because we can't leave the top, uh, the top deck, top the OSB exposed to the weather uh, because that makes fiberglassing it near impossible so it's got to be a sort of uh, one hit one that or at least when we do it cover it properly and we'll be here till about eight o'clock if we do that and it's friday and we don't want to do it so at least this deck has got some protection from the vapor barrier it's not what it's for but this stuff there's no water getting through that in the long term that is that's down man that is down that is the stickiest stuff the stickiest vapor barrier i've ever known it really is it really is quite something, so it's on there, man. No prime or anything, it's on there. So that's it. Uh, this, when before we roof it as well, all this needs changing. All this is push fit, which is perfectly acceptable if it's accessible. We've got to box it all in, it's got to become part of the roof. So we can't just leave that. If it starts to leak in the future, there's no getting to that. It's a ceiling down, or it's a roof off job roof up job or whatever so we're going to replace it more or less like for like insolvent weld uh, and then box it all in and that'll be the end of that that'll be the salt pipe story so yeah i feel like i've let the side down a bit by being a bit of a, a bit of a plank but there we go it's been all right it's been all right yeah yeah but i do like these episodes have like a you know start and a definitive finish but there we go it's part one it's part one part two is coming up and then i'll re-edit it all and put it as a one proper warm deck episode in the future but there we go radio i'll let richard say goodbye until next week uh all the best rich try a bit whoa whoa, whoa 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 before you go before you go contents of said box i did promise you at the beginning of the video Got home this evening, good as gold, here it was. It's all my fault. I had a moan earlier about lead times and places, not being able to go to shops. Now, I've never been to a builder's merchants or roofing merchants or anything and seen these on the shelf. But, however, I know full well it's two to three working days. If I'd ordered it sooner, I would have got it sooner. It's my fault. It's not the suppliers or any suppliers for that matter. But there we go. We live and learn. There we have it. Said. Firmly efficient warm deck roof caps i don't know what they're called but there we go that is by all accounts the most firmly efficient way of securing down your top bit of osb on a warm deck roof there we have it all will be explained in the next episode we've used these a few times now over the years never had any complaints there's a few do's and don'ts with them now but as i say we'll go into all that in the next episode in part two and if the weather stays nice and it has got to be nice We'll get it fiberglassed as well because the flat roof lantern has been ordered. That's got a very short lead time. Hopefully that will be there. So fingers crossed, if I pull my finger out, if I order things on time, get the things there on time, it will be built on time. So there we have it. So stick with us. So hopefully you've learned a little something from this episode. But if you've only learned one thing, it's this. Despite what eyewitness accounts, what people say, and even physical evidence, Richard has got a rather large table saw. See you next week.